Oh yes, welcome back to Marvel Contest of Champions News. It's your 17th of May, Friday edition of the news. Lots of stories to go on over, lots of positive things to end off the week on. So let's roll into these stories. Our first story begins with me being called out. Yes, I got called out because of the luck that was given to me on the Cull Obsidian Crystals. Well, it didn't technically be given to me, but the fact is, it is RNG. But I do sympathise with the person that posted this, weren't Fury Man, because the fact is, it is disappointing when you spend money on these crystals, you spend units, and you're not getting anything good. It is incredibly frustrating, especially if you want to make further progression with the game, and especially with stuff happening at the moment with Act 6.2 restrictions going into things at 6.3, and maybe even 6.4 being very specific on having 6 stars and strong 5 stars at certain classes to get yourself through. With Command Mike reiterating that the luck parameters as well as the AI workings towards players as well as content contributors are not favorable. So the AI isn't favorable in the way that, uh, you know, we're going up against it and as well the drop rate. And if you compare the opening I had yesterday, which uh, link is in the description, three five stars and uh, the rest were four stars. One was a good champion. The rest were just goodish. One was goodish and one was trash. But if you compare it with other people, it was a case that I've seen today, four five stars, one six star. So I don't think in some ways that I'm being favored there, especially for having 10 crystals, 300 units, 100 pounds to have one usable five star champion. You kind of go, is it really? Is it really? As I said, I just want to reiterate, I do feel for Nick Furyman because the fact is you can go through the game, you can grind out the game, you can spin those crystals, Sometimes you just don't get that luck and it does make you question like well Why do other people get lucky and I don't and that's just unfortunately the RNG surrounding the game It would be great if Kabam can kind of tailor it just to kind of make you get that uh, a decent champion But it's just not the case. So uh, I do share the frustrations here I'm not bitter or anything but also just to point out that my luck is very much varied I can go through like two months of getting a terrible five stars to then have a month where I do two six stars one being a saber tooth one being a ghost from it it is very much mixed on opportunity as well as RNG. It's just like, what's going to happen? But the Cavalier stuff, you know, I'm a little bit bummed, but a little bit happy. It's kind of a mixture between spending the money and getting something out of it against like, well, was there any point doing it? So I do, as I said, still sympathize. Next up and on to Marvel Contest Champions True Cost. Amazing page, by the way. Make sure you're following. Link is in the description. But we're going to just cover two aspects of stories about additions to crystals. The first one being the six star. Now the six star does concern me a little bit, but also there's some decent stuff coming our way for the basic. Obviously, we want to see Havoc. We want to see Thing. We want to see Night Thrasher. There's so many decent champions in here, but also there's some, whoa, there's some dodgy ones. Black Panther, Civil War is a six star. A bit apprehensive about I'm quite excited for a MODOK at six star. Don't know about you. Also seeing Captain Marvel, the classic one. Could be quite good seeing how hard she hits, but as well, not an awakening. Very difficult to get nowadays, especially six star, because it's implying, as Kabam have said, that we get a lot more six star shards and five star shards nowadays. Either way, the next couple of months look quite tasty. Where are you going to be going? Are you going to be saving up? And I'm a bit kind of like, Sort of excited, but not for a six-star Diablo. And it's something that I've reiterated in uh, a couple of videos recently. That the champion, because we get champions at four-star, they maybe seem too much like a wet flannel. But as you get them as five-star and six-star against the current meta, could be quite usable. So that is something I'm quite looking forward to seeing. Where these champions could fit in with people's rosters. And as well, <sighs> Cyclops at six-star. Two Cyclops is a six-star. Yay! Speaking of new champions added... Five star now. The five star basic sees havoc as a five star being put in on 21st of May. Personally, I'm saving up my five star shards. Oh, hang on, you're not meant to do that. Oh, sorry, Kabam, sorry about that. Uh, it's not like I'm trying to uh, just kind of wait until something decent enters into the basic. Hmm, yeah. Yeah, I I'm definitely in the wrong there. But the fact is, I do want to see my roster improve, and a lot of players do experience and say the same thing. They want to see some decent champions. So that's the hope on the 21st of May that uh, I can indeed feel myself getting a Havoc and maybe some other champions from the basic pool that could be quite exciting. I'm kind of done with the featured uh, life now and I'm kind of back to uh, doing basics and especially with a lot of those champions that we've tried to get as featured now enter into basic five stars. People can start seeing improvements to their roster. I just hope you don't get anything bad. Next up and opinions are still coming in on the class gate slash rarity gates for the upcoming 6.2. So Act 6.2 is, is coming on us, it's probably like a month away, and it's gonna be a little bit of a difference 
in direction. From Caban's perspective, I think they're absolutely fine with this. And I have seen some like comments that people have said, they've just gone like, well, people moaned about this, then they got through it. They moaned about this content, they got through it. Uh, and I think it's, it's difficult because you're playing with a lot of people's different agendas and motivations in game. Some people like to get this done sooner rather than later, and we'll kind of go, I don't have the roster to do this sooner rather than later. Trying to define what an end game based player actually is against a mid tiering. There's a lot of people's agendas mixed with opinions, mixed with Kabam and how they want to change the game to be more prolonged uh, by kind of slowing down the process and slowing down this rush culture for a lot of people so they get to enjoy the game a bit more and kind of reiterating its permanent content. So those are generally the kind of opinions and everyone's kind of coming together. A lot of people have good discussions, but try and not fall out too much about this. Trucos putting together this little kind of like, it's it's funny, I, I love this, it's, it's, it's a funny take. So obviously you'll need units in order to do chapter three and you'll need a credit card in order to do chapter four. It's funny, I get it, it's, it, it's, it's funny. Also, it's nice to get an idea of a snippet of like the future to come and two things in particular, first being this one here in that there may be a time in the future that class restrictions to six star champions could be a thing, which is a kind of a little bit scary, but I can imagine that the the champion, the, the amount of six stars and five stars that you can get will then change based on the content. Uh, and maybe that will be in a new story mode, because do bear in mind, act six is the end of the story. And then where they go from there will be either some sort of new story arc that maybe have uh, several acts to it. I, I don't know. Uh, I'm only guessing at the moment. Maybe we'll learn more at this year's New York Comic Con, but we'll see what is for the future. The other thing being here, this point about what defines an end game player. So if you've completed Act 5, then technically you feel that you may be a veteran or an endgame player, but that's not the case anymore. Obviously, you'll need to go through Act 6 or 6.1 to get Cavalier status to kind of get that point. And maybe you're saying that you're an endgame player because you're able to do things like you're at the point where you can do Variant 1, Variant 2. You've done your initial completion of Labyrinth of Legends. What defines you as an end game player? And it kind of like changes through new content additions to then where you are in the game and what you've been able to do. Say about a year ago, it would have been a case of saying, I've done Act 5, what's there for me? Well, we got Variant 1 coming in. Have you done the completion of uh, Lab of Legends? No. Um, these defining things kind of change. So where an end game player is defined nowadays will probably be once you've done Cavalier status or maybe you've done X, Y, and Z. It's hard to kind of get that kind of thing there so you may be a mid tier player but it's confusing to say where am i currently in the game let's not try and define it because it's just going to get confusing next up i just want to shout out something on the forums which isn't taken up quite so much but is a really nice place to go for people's real logical as well as in-depth look on champions and that is the champion improvement suggestion thread because People have come together with so much level of detail, they put so much effort into the extent of like how they would change a certain champion to improve it. And I hope that Kabam do go and take a look at this because obviously these are people that play the game, not people that design for the game. These are the people that play the game, love the game, passionate about the game. And obviously they want to see great improvements for the champions and characters they love uh, that are delivered by Marvel. So if you have a suggestion, you want to go in detail, do you want to check out what other people are doing? then go to the link in the description below. Next up on a forum post has been resurrected from the dead. Yes, this is all about tax paying in conjunction with buying stuff in Marvel Contest of Champions. I mainly to do with the US and how taxing works with that. And it's something like this post has been quiet for well over a year and then just like, boom, just came back to life again. As you know, microtransactions are a thing in most mobile games, but in Marvel Contest of Champions, at times it can feel that it may be a little bit expensive, and especially for those in the US that have to pay tax. But there's some states in the US that don't have to pay tax on things like digital purchases. I'm not quite sure the ins and outs of this, but it does seem that this has been a little bit of a hot topic, especially in this thread. If you want to learn more on this, then you can go to the link in the description. I'd like to say that you could have your say on the topic, but the uh, the thread is closed and there is a more, like I'd say, up-to-date topic, but if you click the link, it's been closed as well, so uh, you can't have your say on, on the fact of taxes, but you can learn a little bit more, so go to the link in the description. And on to our final story, I want to leave you laughing going into the weekend. So, we've got this lovely picture here, perfectly harmless, it's a lovely picture, is today upload cute pics of your dog day by obviously Brian Grant. No? Well, I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah? And so I decided, as you know, I like to respond with a bit of a laugh. And it's 
and it's this. I can't believe you've done this. So if if you were in my live stream yesterday, you'll know we were playing about with female yourself Snapchat filters, and in particular, <laughs> oh, I can't. I honestly cannot look at this without laughing. It's gonna not gonna do my throat wonders, but um, yeah. <laughs> That lovely lady to the to the far left is uh, is me, um, not very bangable, um, but obviously uh, Pete. That's Panda Man Pete. Um, yeah, very very bangable. So um, at least somebody could do the Snapchat filter wonders. I just make it look bloody ugly and scuffy. But Johnny even saying, I thought you you shaved. Luckily the filter takes off any kind of like stubble and and stuff. But um. Uh, He's peak and look good. Now that has been your Marvel Contest of Champions news for the 17th of May 2019. If you enjoyed the news today, hit the like button, subscribe for more Marvel Contest of Champions based content. Live stream tonight, 1900 hours as normal. Tomorrow and Sunday, I may decide not to stream. I just want to get my throat back to normality, just so I don't ruin it going into next week and becomes worse than it is. But in any case, thank you very much for watching. I've been Richard Man. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Catch you in the next one. Bye bye for now.